so I redid my spices. If you're here a while ago, you would have seen that I had other ones from the rack from Dollar Tree and these little containers, but I didn't like it. Things were falling apart. So I got some mason jars. I filled up some spices from a local store in town that does bulk. Um, so that's why I have this jam one filled because I want to reuse some of the containers I have. So I got basil, parsley, and oregano. The rest are just spices I have I've accumulated. I just feel like this is so much more organized. Now I got some more jars here that I'm gonna finish off with. But I want to share that I have some um, tomatoes roasting. I have some tomato sauce going here. I'm gonna start my tomato soup. Um, I'm using red onions in here just because I had left over from tacos one night. So I'm gonna cut up some cucumber and celery, place it in there, let these go for a while, about 45 minutes, um, and I will turn them halfway in between. This, I let go until all these are nice and soft, and I'm just gonna add my herbs. So to each of these, I'm gonna add basil, I'm gonna add parsley, I'm gonna add oregano, just for to at least my tomato sauce. And then I think that's what I'm gonna add, just that as well, because I'm gonna have um, garlic in here, I'm gonna have onions in here, so I don't need anything else. I salt and pepper the tomatoes in here, and I put some olive oil on them. So that is the plan right now. I do have a batch of tomato sauce that I made just the other day in the fridge. Um, so once that gets where this point is, I'm gonna add this to that and stir in um, a can of tomato paste because I forgot to add it to this. And then I will separate and freeze it. I'm not too sure about the canning because I would like to can it, but I, I know it has to be a certain type of acidity level and I'm just not sure if my recipe matches that. So for now, I'm just gonna freeze mine until I do a little bit more research and learn about it. But I'm just gonna get this going. I'm gonna start that while the kids are napping. So both kids are napping. So that's why I kind of decided to do everything while they're napping. Um, this is going to this down and stir it. My kitchen sink is a mess. I ran into town because I wanted to get jars for that, which I'm way more happy with. And I wanted to find some envelopes because I'm seed saving. So I have seed save watermelon. So some honeydew seeds, I did some watermelon, and I did some green peppers. That was just for my first green pepper and my first watermelon. I might try to save a few more, um, but I want to get little paper envelopes, and I wanted to um, see if they have those plastic, like what baseball cards would go in and when people used to collect them. But I did find some stuff on Amazon, which I can share with you. And it has like this little envelope that says seed name, the variety, so if it's tomato, you can say it's aroma, celebrity, money maker, bush, bush, a beef steak, so tom, little cherry tomatoes, whatever, whatever kind you have, same with bell pepper. So I kind of like those. And then it also had um, seeding directions. So when you wanted to plant. So I thought that was kind of cool. And it was a hundred pieces for $17. And then the, um, little plastic stuff that goes in the binder. It's like 250 squares, so four per sheet, or maybe even eight, I'm not sure if it's double-sided, uh, for around 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something. I don't know, it was less than $30 for everything, so maybe it was even less than 20, if that math doesn't seem right. But anyways, I digress. I want to get some soup because my tomatoes are Kind of, they're slowly coming, but I find that when I pick them and I leave them in my garage, by the next day they're nice and ripe. So I kind of wanted to get some stuff going. I've had to toss out a few cherry tomatoes because I, um, I just let them sit too long. And my one, my one plant has I made so much stuff out of it already. So I definitely, I, which I forgot with my next batch of stuff again, I'm gonna to try to save a couple of seeds from the cherry tomatoes as well. Cause I do wanna just plant one next year. Um, I'm kind of deciding whether I wanna put a little stand on the side of the road, but, um, but then if they don't sell, then I have a lot, right? So anyways, I'm gonna stop talking cause I wanna get some
just starting my journey on homesteading um, kind of thing. So I know you just see me throw out some scrap and lots of people would use that for if they have livestock, they'll use it to feed their chickens or their pigs or whatever, but I don't have that. Um, or people would save their veggie scraps to make veggie stock. I'm also not there yet. So there's no point of hoarding it in my freezer when I know I'm not going to get to it. Um, this is a slow transition because I don't want to overdo it and get burnt out, if that makes sense, and then not enjoy it. I want to start slow. I mean, a step towards it is a good step, I think. So there's no push, there's no rush for anything. And I know it's sometimes easier said than done when you're watching all these people who seem like they have it all together and they're just doing everything, right? So just know no pressure do things at your own speed as you want to do it if you're just getting into canning and you don't and you live early and you don't have a garden or you have like a box that's just great like you can buy i used to when i started making my tomato soup i used to go to the grocery store and buy my tomatoes so it's all about starting somewhere um and that's the first time i made soup was i bought roma tomatoes from the grocery store a big bag of them and i made my soup from there now that I have my garden, I use my own tomatoes, um, but everyone starts somewhere. So that's what I'm going to say about that. Leave it there. Did I add garlic to this? I did. So I'm done with my garlic. See if I can clean up the kitchen also. of everything is what I do. Can't go wrong when your heart's in it. I'm adding chicken broth to my tomato soup, so technically I guess it's not a vegetable soup. I usually go in between uh, vegetable stock and chicken stock. It kind of depends on what I have in the house. Like if I had my own bone broth, bone broth, it'd be really beneficial to add that into your soup. Come over here with me now as I do some spices. It's a little. <laughs> what should I do with you? Does this work? Kind of. Maybe a little tall, but. Some I'm going to leave in the actual containers that it comes in. Um, I'll put you down so you can actually see me for everything.
like my everyday spice. This spice I use is a lot. There's a few odd ones in here that I don't like lemon pepper, cloves. But nonetheless, these are just like regular normal spices. This is stuff that I've bought. I'm going to finish using up the rest of this and then probably buy some from the store. So this is vegetable stock. Oh, I didn't know that. I could use that for my soup. Um, Montreal steak spice. Then this is like a roasted pepper garlic. I used to use this on everything and I kind of stopped using it on everything. So I've got my toothpicks, this chili, chipotle mango seasoning, um, and these salts that I got from that store also, which are really good on like potatoes and steak when you grill them. Popcorn seasoning. I have this sriracha salt. And then the rest of this is just gonna get washed. So this looks way better to me, way easier. I can grab, know what I need, so that's nice. I have quite a few jars left. This is my, well, I always had overstock of spice, which I still do. I have a lot of pepper, some babe, basil powder, and some curry, which I don't use often. That's why it's gonna be left up there and I'm gonna put it back up top. I forgot to film. I, this is my immersion blend cup and I added about half, there's about half left. So I'm just gonna blend this and add it to a bowl. <laughs> gonna mix this to combine it just to see I don't know I'm kind of determined uh, wondering whether I should add some tomato paste to this I'm gonna taste it in a minute and see Oops, easy, easy. Okay. the stuff that was cold is kind of thick so I just want to make sure I kind of mix it good this element is off, but it's just the pan's hot and the stove top will be hot too. So let me taste this. Mm. Well, I think I'm gonna add the can of tomato pit paste and I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar. I will show you. This is my sugar thing and I just go that's the amount of sugar I add. Just a couple sprinkles. I'm gonna get a can of tomato paste in here. Um, take it a bit off the element. Oh, let it actually cook together for a little bit and then take it off the element and let it cool. And okay. So, kind of made it a little bit redder. I'm gonna let this just warm up together and then I'll take it off. Let me go see what the red it needs. I just realized I was in solo. This is my tomato sauce, it's thicker, which is good because once you add it to the pasta with the um, pasta sauce, it's looking orange, coloring is a bit off, but it's a darker bread. And then this is my soup. As you can tell, this is runnier like soup. So I think I got everything. There might be a few more chunks. I'm just gonna let this 
um, simmer on the stove for a little bit, get softer, and then go around again with the uh, immersion blender. There's that. It's my leftovers. And I still have all these tomatoes. See, and you go through them like. I don't know what happened to these ones, but as you can see, they're not fully colored and a lot of them rotted. So I don't know what happened with that. I'm going to have a sink there, dishwashers going. Those pans are hot, so we'll let them cool down before I clean up the rest. And I think I want to clean up this drawer as like I did with the spices. So I got five things of tomato sauce. This one down there. The last one wasn't quite the same amount as the rest by just a sliver. So that makes me really happy. Yeah. And tomato soup on this pot is like up to there. Oops, can't see. Is about two third, one third of the way, which is normal. Um, I just like to make my soup in that one for when I use the immersion blender. I have lots of room on the sides so it doesn't get messy. So that will probably make two or three meals. Um, so that's pretty good for an afternoon of work. Right, Loretta? <laughs> oh, she cracks me up. So that's that. Just waiting for John to wake up. Me and Loretta will just hang out. Yeah, we'll just hang out now. Yeah. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. So I did want to come and show you that I did end up cleaning up this cupboard. It looks so much nicer. I have labeled everything. Some are double, like this one, this one's not labeled, but it's just salt and I know that. Um, and then I can refill them at that store when I need them. I think I have two, yeah, two powder sugars. I kind of labeled them one powder, one icing, but nonetheless. And baking soda, baking powder, my chocolate chips, coarse salt or pickling salt. Uh, this is baking soda. This is butterscotch chips or white chocolate chips. I didn't end up labeling these because I might not use them again for these type of chocolate chips. So I didn't want to label them. And then I got my raisins, coconut oil, some yeast, my cups, my vanilla, Worcestershire sauce, and this is gluten free flour. So those I'm just going to leave like that for now. But I just wanted to quickly show you that.